city and found all used child workers. Monica's the youngest worker in this group at just four. But even four years old. Four years old mining cobalt. This is horrific. The fact that we want our electric vehicles, our new phones, our new laptops, so that a, because a four-year-old is mining it, you could be literally having the blood of a four-year-old in your car because you decided that, oh, well, we got to have an electric vehicle. And this is not a an advocacy for us to go back to fossil fuels. No, there is a much better way, which I'll talk about later in this segment. But the fact still remains that we are literally exploiting children so that we can fight climate change when we really aren't. We're not. This is not how you do it. One of the things that I was deeply supportive of back in 2020 was the Green New Deal. I thought it was a great idea. And then I learned that Bernie Sanders at the time who was running for president actually had a watered down version of the Green New Deal that was submitted by the Green Party. So of course, if it's more concentrated, more stronger, of course, I would be more for it, right? But according to Bernie Sanders, Green New Deal was that he also wanted to increase the amount of electric vehicles that are on the road that would help curb our dependence on fossil fuels. This would also pull back on the uh, climate change that we are currently experiencing. Look, I put out a, a YouTube short a, a couple days ago about how hot it was. It was like death out there, which I do believe we definitely have to curb climate change in order to survive on this planet because the earth is going to shake us off. With that being said, I feel like there is a pseudo green revolution happening right now. And a lot of it is being pushed by people, especially in the Democratic Party. Because ultimately what's going on right now is they are pushing for green tech, but at the expense of people in the global south. Let's get into this. So shout out to Roger who submitted this article. This is going to be a biggie. U.S. electric vehicle boom is deepening the suffering in the Congo. Now, any of you guys know, I have actually done a couple stories on my channel about what's happening into the Democratic Republic of the Congo the DRC, and about how there are cobalt and coltan mines, among others, diamond mines to be more specific, that employ basically slavery of the people of Congo in order to mine for these minerals that we use in our daily lives. And so now with this electric vehicle, this EV boom that is happening within the West and in China, unfortunately, well, it is causing more people to be exploited in places like Congo. Let's get into this story. It's a biggie. So the blurb says, black transit activists in the US are calling attention to the plunder of the Congo for cobalt mining. So here's one of the mines here. As you can see, and it's heartbreaking, but we got to talk about it. It says the story of John Doe, one of the Democratic Republic of the Congo, is tucked in a lawsuit filed five years ago against the US tech companies, including Tesla, the world's largest electric vehicle producer, and a country where the earth hides its treasures beneath the surface. Those who chip away at its bounty pay an unfair price. 
as a preteen, his family could no longer afford to pay his six dollar monthly school fee, leaving him with one option, a life working underground in a tunnel, digging for cobalt rocks. But soon after he began working for roughly two US dollars per day, the child was buried alive under the rubble of a collapsed mine tunnel. His body was never recovered. So just to let you all know, there are children working these mines. Children. For all of you that talk about we need to protect our kids. Let's continue. The nation fractured by war, disease, and famine has seen more than 6 million people die since the mid-1990s. I'm going to stop there for a second. It says the nation of the Democratic Republic of Congo has seen more than 6 million people die since the mid-1990s, making the conflict the deadliest since World War II. Are you listening right now? Why isn't this news nationally? Do you really want me to get into that? Let's not forget about King Leopold II that killed over 10 million Congolese people in the early 20th century. He killed more people than Hitler. Why haven't you learned about that in school? Well, I can tell you, the lives of black people are less regarded than the lives of Europeans. That's part of the reason why. So for a great reason, a lot of people aren't hearing about what's going on in Congo, right? For great reason, we don't, like some of you don't even know that 70% of the electricity that is used by France comes from the, the uranium that's mined in Niger. So if 70% of their electricity comes from the nuclear power plants and that uranium is mined in Niger, of course Niger should have at least 90 to 100% electricity, but no. Most of Niger does not have regular electricity. And yet France does. But France doesn't have uranium mines. Welcome to colonialism. Welcome to imperialism. Whew. Let's continue. But in recent years, the death and destruction have been aided in the growing number of electric vehicles coming down American streets. In 2022, the U.S. was the third largest importer of cobalt, spent nearly $525 million on the mineral, much of which came from the Congo. As America's dependence on the Congo has grown, Black-led labor environmental organizers here in the U.S. have worked to build a transitional solidarity movement. Activists also say that the inequities faced in the Congo relate to those that Black Americans experience. And thanks in part to social media, the desire to better understand what's happening in the Congo has grown in the past 10 years. I can say this for certain, and this is one thing I am proud of. A lot more people, particularly a lot of Black people, are talking about what's going on in Congo. I am actually proud that that is happening, but we need to do more. 
More needs to be talking about, more needs to be spoken about what's going on in Congo right now. And yes, we can still keep talking. We can walk and chew gum at the same time. We can still keep talking about what's going on in Palestine. That is important. We can, we can now start talking about what's going on in Congo. We can also start talking about what's going on in Sudan. We can also start talking about what's going on in Tigray. We can also start talking about what's going on in Haiti. Of course, because these are important. Why? Because they're all connected. Do not forget that. In some ways, the Black Lives Matter movement first took root in the Congo after the uprising in Ferguson in 2014. And since the murder of George Floyd and the outrage over the Gaza war, there has been an uptick in Congolese and Black American groups working on solidarity campaigns. Throughout it all, the inequities faced by Congolese people and Black Americans show the supply chain highlights similar patterns of exploitation and disenfranchisement. Bakari Height, the transit equality organizer at the Labor Network for Sustainability, says the global harm caused by the energy transition and the inability of Black Americans to participate in it at home are for a simple reason. Quote, we are always on the menu, but we're never at the table. The space of transportation planning and climate change is mostly white people for people of color that aren't black. So these discussions about exploitation aren't happening in those spaces. It is almost like a second form of colonialism. Green colonialism, that's what it is. Because they know, they know that climate change is real. And they know that we have to curb it. But the way they're going about it, the way they're going about it, that's what nefarious. Because they're exploiting the global south to save the world. That's the wrong way to go about it. That's what they're doing. So when you have Joe Biden talk about, oh, we're going to have a, a boost in, in manufacturing electric vehicles. We're going to get more EVs on the road and we're going to have more charging stations. And then you see everybody get up and they clap, oh, yay, yay, Joe Biden, we're going to curb climate change. They are, it's the pursuit of something positive, but by nefarious re means. And because of that, it's like, yes. We do want to curb climate change, but do we want to do it at the expense of people and by the expense of people, by poor people in Congo? Shouldn't be that way. Let's continue. Height says, however, when black people are in the room, these conversations are not only more prevalent, but also more action oriented. His organization supports black workers and helps craft policies that support bold climate action in ways that address labor concerns without sacrificing what science is telling us is necessary. See, this is why we need to be in the room. Help. People may get mad at me for this. I don't care. We need to be leading the movement. The most disenfranchised people need to be the leaders of the movement. If you want to be in a movement that centers the voices of women, you need to let them lead the movement. Don't you go in there and start centering yourself. The people who are the most disenfranchised need to lead the movements. I don't care what nobody says. You can get mad at me all you want, but guess what, chicken butt? That's what needs to happen. Because the, the, the people who are the most victimized know exactly what liberation is for them. That's how it needs to happen. Which means some of you 
are going to have to sit down and listen and follow through. And that's it. You're not the main star. You're not the leading character. You are the supporting character in this. All right, let's continue. While American South has picked up about two thirds of the electric vehicle production jobs, black workers that were, I'm sorry, ugh, black workers there are more likely to work in non unionized warehouses, receiving less pay and protections. The White House has also failed to share data that definitively proves whether black workers are receiving these jobs rather than them just being placed near black communities. This made me think about why in the world is it that when you travel down south, your pay is less? You make less money. And is it just because uh, some arbitrary reason that is really no coincidence? Or is it because if you look at black populations in the United States, if you look at the map, all from, I would say, uh, North Carolina, and it curves all the way down the coast, North Carolina to South Carolina, uh, to Georgia, Florida, Alabama, Louisiana, Mississippi, all in that area is the heaviest black population. And who do they want to pay less? I'd say the reason why we don't make as much money as northern states here in the South is because of racism and white supremacy. That's why you as a white person, if you're making sixty, seventy thousand dollars up north and you come down here and you're making thirty, forty thousand dollars, it's because of white supremacy. You just got caught in the crossfire. So racism and white supremacy actually hurts white people too. And so any reason why they want to build the electric vehicle plants in southern states, especially ones that are more adversarial to unionization. There we go. This is why worker solidarity is so important. All right. Automakers are moving their EV manufacturing operations to the South in hopes of exploiting low labor costs and making higher profits. That's uh, Iterinika Bell, I hope I said her name correctly, uh, the council for uh, at-large council for Clarkston, Georgia last year. While Georgia has been targeted for investment by the Biden administration, workers are refusing to stand idly by and let them repeat a cycle that harms black communities and working families. So just like they want to exploit black workers in Congo, they want to exploit black workers here too. It says solidarity activism reached a national stage last week at the Morehouse College graduation ceremony. When professors at the school sent clear messages to Joe Biden, uh, Samuel Livingston, and Cynthia Hewitt unfurled a Congolese flag as Biden gave his speech. And Dr. Tora Taylor, wearing a DRC pin on her cap, stood up, raised her fist, and turned her back to the president. Yet less publicized has been the work of Congolese and Black American groups building bridges, including Congo Initiative based in the Congo and a DC based group, Friends of the Congo. So Congo has roughly 75% of the world's reserves, cobalt, uh, the precious metal with some reddish teal or violet tint needed for cell phones, laptops and electric car batteries lie under the chalky surface. So let's go here. It says cobalt mining is the slave farm perfect, perfected. It says of the 255,000 Congolese mining for cobalt, 40,000, 40,000 are children. They're not only exposed to physical threats, but environmental ones. Cobalt mining pollutes critical water sources, plus the air and land. 
It is linked to respiratory illnesses, food insecurity, and violence. I want to humanize the people who are working in these mines. Let me share this as well, because I think this is absolutely necessary. This is a seven-year-old. This is a seven-year-old report that I want to show you guys because I think this is important. Let's take a look. This is a special report inside the Congo Cobalt Mines that exploit children. This is one of the thousands of unregulated, unmonitored mines in the DRC. It's crawling with children working like modern day slaves. A 12 hour long day of punishing work may earn them the equivalent of a pound. Although one of the poorest countries on earth, DRC is rich in minerals. But a history of brutal colonial exploitation looks like being repeated now in 2017. Much of it's mined by hand with rudimentary tools in harsh, potentially hazardous conditions. No heavy machinery. Not even a bobcat. Just shovels. That's it. I want you to think in your mind's eye to the little child that's in your life. Think about it. And see them right here. Do you want a child like this to be enslaved in these mines just so that you can have the latest vehicle from Tesla? Seeing this will make you look at Elon Musk in a different way, won't it? Now you guys are starting to see why I'm an anti-capitalist. Let's continue. And wretched whether or not, the rush is on for a mineral the DRC has in great abundance, cobalt, and it's fast becoming more precious than gold. It's a critical ingredient in lithium iron batteries which power smartphones and laptops. An army of children are at the heart of the mining production. Wearing no shoes and in the most wretched conditions, Dorsan is ordered to retrieve the sack he's forgotten. There's an urgency now. The rains make this dangerous work even more risky. And Dorsan's told in no uncertain terms he risks a beating if he messes up again. Dorsan, with Richard beside him, have worked all day. They're 8 and 11 years old. Even this punishing work doesn't guarantee enough for food. Dorsan hasn't eaten for two days now. All this, so you can have your latest electric vehicle, so you can get your Starbucks, so you can have the latest iPhone or Android, right? All that from this. Remember when people used to talk about sweatshops? It never went away. It's still here. So he says, think of all the childhoods lost. Live lost for our entertaining distractions. Lives lost for our entertaining distractions. Yes. 
lost childhoods before our very eyes. This is what helpless looks like. And he's one of the children making millions for multinational corporations in America and China whilst they suffer in squalor. For this, they'll get maybe eight British pence a day. Eight British pence? That's like, what, six to eight cents? In our country? That child lost their mother. Has chattel slavery ended? The tunnels are dug by hand with no supports. They frequently collapse, especially during rain. The miners climb down using holes carved in the rock and no safety equipment. This most precious of minerals is often extracted and sorted by tiny hands. They don't wear gloves or masks, yet the World Health Organization says exposure to cobalt and breathing in its dust fumes can cause long-term health problems. We visited five different mines across the south of DRC and found all used child workers. Monica's the youngest worker in this group at just four. But even... Four years old. Four years old mining cobalt. This is horrific. The fact that we want our electric vehicles, our new phones, our new laptops, so that a, because a four-year-old is mining it, you could be literally having the blood of a four-year-old in your car because you decided that, oh, well, we got to have an electric vehicle. And this is not a an advocacy for us to go back to fossil fuels. No, there is a much better way, which I'll talk about later in this segment. But the fact still remains that we are literally exploiting children so that we can fight climate change when we really aren't. We're not. This is not how you do it. This is like, this is like, Oh, well, my family's hungry, so I'm going to steal from a starving child just to feed my family. Yay, my family's fed, but they're still a starving child. That's not the way you go about it. And that's what our country is doing right now. This is what they do. Is this really who we are? Don't answer that question. That's what this country is. Absolutely. This is why we're trying to change it. This is why we're trying to get rid of the system. Even those barely able to walk have lost their childhoods to mining. <laughs> Natalie's 12 years old. <laughs> My fingers hurt, she tells us. Miles away on a different site, Makumba Mateba shows us the cobalt tunnel he's dug with three of his friends. It's physically tough work. They removed all this rock by hand over nearly four months. It's incredibly um, insecure for them. Although this is really rich in minerals and it's going down just 15 meters, there's no support bars. There's, there's, they have no protective masks or protective equipment at all. And right at the bottom, I can see water. It's his village's water, which Macumba's convinced has caused his health problems. After a lifetime of drinking it, he has a huge tumor on his throat.
j'ai soif de pas puiser de l'eau. There are countless reports of other health problems from those living nearby and working on the mines. On trouve c'est les infections, mingi ni mama infection, je les tourne au nanko. Quand c'est moment de mika ma carrière ça, on attend d'abord plutôt la ma infection sur l'ongola, mingi ne qu'on a vu ma bouton bouton, mingi ne je les tourne au nanko ma cause il ne tourne pas maman, mais bon il est dans ma carrière. These twins are just two days old, and although small, so far they're healthy, to the relief of their mother. Oh, ma 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 ni ma minerai, je suis dans l'état ma problème comme moi, ma nom Johnny Ndakutumika. Je suis dans ma problème, ma difficulté comme moi, ma mimba. Bon, je suis ma nom que ni kumbwa ni ma moyen je connais tout pelé, kukwe ça ma moyen je connais tout pelé comme Johnny Ndakutumika. But even if they stay healthy, the twins face a lifetime of hard labor as soon as they can walk. The children's cobalt is sold cheaply to mostly Chinese traders who we film secretly. They don't ask questions about where their cobalt comes from or whose work to extract it. They just want the best price. The black part here yeah, is cobalt. Even those who aren't Chinese, this trading market has Indian owners, told us they sell onto the dominant Chinese exporter of cobalt, CDM. The cobalt first mined here is then sold again to the Chinese parent company, which then supplies some of the world's biggest battery makers. And those batteries, with ingredients which originated in DRC, end up in, for instance, smartphones. It's an intricate supply chain which allows easy deniability for the multinationals making huge profits. Unfortunately, China also needs to change some things too. And, and I know that the, the CPC are trying to make sure that they stay away from exploitative practices in their country, which is, I applaud, but what about the exploitation that's happening in Africa? China, you guys got to step up. I know you guys are trying to do more in Africa, especially with the Belt and Road Initiative, but this is also pressing too. You need to uh, embody the spirit of Patrice Lumumba and push for safety as well as against child labor laws and push against this exploitation and make sure that the people of Congo who do decide to work in these mines, number one, are adults, number two, are safe, number three, they also are paid a living, thriving wage for that cobalt. continue. An investigation last year by Amnesty found similar human rights abuses. Nothing appears to have changed. Most of these child miners will never own a smartphone. They barely survive from day to day. And many other children like Dawson will be back again tomorrow, digging out one of the most sought after minerals of our time for a pittance. Alex Crawford, Sky News in the DRC. And so now it is gotten worse because that report was from seven years ago, seven. So any wonder how much more intense it has gotten since then with this huge EV boom that is happening? This is why it is imperative that we talk about these things especially from an anti-imperialist, anti-colonialist perspective. Because while we want to save our planet, we have to also do it the right way. Let's go here. Let's 
So this article is talk about here it here it is better not to be born. Cobalt mining for big tech is driving child labor deaths in Congo. So this was from last year. It says child labor, sexual assault, birth defects, abject poverty, workers buried alive. A new expose in artisanal cobalt mining in the Democratic Republic of Congo lifts the curtain on a nightmarish world in which billions of people are unwillingly complicit. Senior climate correspondent Louise Boyle reports. So this goes into how we're all complicit in this. But this is no different in Congo than what happened under King Leopold. Because what was one of the biggest things they were mining in Congo when King Leopold was doing what he was doing here as far as colonialism? It was rubber. And when you had the boom of cars using rubber tires, rubber for many different things that we needed here in, the, in this country, guess where it came from? The same place. And so when they didn't mine it enough, what did Leopold do? Leopold cut off hands. That's what he did. And so the whole world was complicit in that too. Now the whole world is now complicit in this. And this is why systems must change. Let's continue. It says these miners are the first step in the race for precious metals and minerals by some of the world's most powerful companies with multi billion dollar valuations and those whose founders and CEOs are household names. If you own a smartphone, tablet, laptop, e-scooter, electric vehicle, or all the above, then it's a system in which you are unwittingly complicit. Also, if you vape, because vapes also are electronic. Remember that. We got to We got to talk about it. Let's get into it. At no point in human history has so much suffering generated so much profit and been directly linked to the lives of billions of people around the world. Around 75% of the world's coal pile is mined in the DRC and the world can't get enough of it. This rare silvery metal is an essential component to every lithium ion char rechargeable battery, a necessary part of the booming electric vehicle industry. Those of y'all that like the game, those of y'all that got that PlayStation controller, that Xbox controller, you guys got the Nintendo Switch. Yep, y'all too. Even gaming companies that utilize their controllers. It says for centuries, the DRC, a landscape of near unmatched natural resources, has been looted by colonizers, first for slaves, ivory and gold, and then rubber, copper, palm oil, and minerals. The genocidal regime of King Leopold II, the Belgian king who murdered and mutilated as many as 10 million Africans at the turn of the 19th century, was followed by decades of Western-backed kleptocratic leaders who enriched themselves and their cronies leaving the country to wither. By most metrics of health, wealth, and progress, the DRC ranks among the worst in the world. So this is something I think is necessary to talk about because I want to share this. So somebody made a comment, and I, I think this is apropos. Thank you very much for this. Zoe said, the only break Congo has ever had was the five years under Lumumba. Yes, Patrice Lumumba fought for the liberation of Congo. Patrice Lumumba was president of Congo that tried to 
make sure that people had, you know, uh, they were uplifted. And as far as the minerals that Congo has, well, he tried to make sure that those were nationalized too, so that all the, the money that was made from all the minerals and all the resources that Congo has, that it goes to the people. Congo is one of the most richest countries in the world when it comes to minerals and resources. If Congo was able to truly have sovereignty over their resources outside of the multinationals that basically steal from the store, Congo would be the Wakanda of the real world. Congo is the real Wakanda. And anybody who watches the Black Panther movies knows how, you know, the Western government is trying to get the, the, the vibranium from Wakanda because, it, you know, this is, this is literally it. And this is why I didn't want a socialist leader, because a socialist leader would have stopped all those multinationals and said, nope, if you guys want our resources, you got to pay for it and you have to pay enough for it so that we can pay our people a living wage. And then we're going to take all that money and distribute it among everybody. And then we're going to raise the living standards of everybody so that everybody does not have to suffer, which everybody has a life of dignity where our children can have a childhood and they can have a great education. And then when they become adults, they can have a great job and they can work in those mines with proper safety regulations and they can have a living wage and a great work-life balance. And so they can live their lives in peace and liberation. But under capitalism, that's not the case. So this is why we have to pay attention to this. Now, I wanna share this as well. says companies operating in the country are primarily concerned about their own welfare, filling their own pockets. They're not really concerned about the welfare of the Congolese people. That's from uh, Carney. Carney, a former research consultant for the Congressional Black Caucus Foundation, has spent years pointing out the link between the Congolese and Black American struggles. What we say to the people is that in a country that's so critical to the future of the planet, a country that we're all connected to through our cell phones and iPads or electric vehicles, is that even if you're in California, you're connected to the Congo. Congolese women have the highest metallic content in the body in the world because they're digging in the soil to get those minerals. Similarly, the U.S. has a poor birth outcomes have been linked to higher exposure to pollutants. Pregnant Black women are more likely to give I'm sorry, more likely to live in poor quality environments compared to white women. Cobalt accounts for as much as 60% of the batteries that drive our lives because the mineral possesses a unique electron configuration that allows the battery to remain stable at higher en energy densities. This means cobalt heavy batteries can hold more of a charge. While there has been a push to use alternative minerals and electric batteries, most other options are unstable and unsafe for the user. Some experts have argued that the U.S. should turn its attention to Canada, which has the top five countries, which is in the top five countries producing cobalt, and the only nation in the Western Hemisphere with deposits of the minerals required to make next generation electric batteries. But it's more costly venture that to this point has yet to make waves in the United States. In the interim, no one knows how many women, men and children have been killed in the Congolese operations. But the tally, which is likely to be thousands of lives per year, is expected to rise. In the country, in the coming years, it is estimated that more than half of the world's cobalt will be used just for electric vehicles. 
The federally subsidized push to increase electric vehicle production by 2030 calls a 15-fold increase in battery production. Already, the nation imports of cobalt increased by 35% from 2021 to 2022. Still, the U.S. has been slow to acknowledge its role. In February, White House briefing uh, about the U.S. efforts on the environment across the African continent, the Congo and cobalt were never mentioned. And earlier this month, Amos Hostin, a White House senior advisor for energy investment, encouraged mineral, mining minerals in risky countries in the name of clean energy transition. You know what's funny? I, I, I want to bring this out, too. We're all talking about this transition to green energy, yet we are willing to destroy Congo, which also has the second largest rainforest in the world, which would help against climate change. Make that make sense. You know, the Amazon rainforest is the biggest rainforest in the world. The Congolese rainforest is the second biggest rainforest in the world. When they say that the Amazon rainforest, they call it the lungs of the, of the earth. Well, you have the right lung and you have the left lung. Well, the, the, the left lung is the Congolese rainforest. If you ever looked at Congo's landscape, it is lush and green. And they're tearing all that down to mine for what? For what? He says, we can all live in capitals and cities around the world and say, I don't want to do business there. But what are you really saying is we're not going to have an energy transition because the energy transition is not going to happen if it can only be produced where I live under my standards. Here's the problem, though. We could do this a different way, but they don't want to because they want to do it through electric vehicles because electric vehicles are individualistic. This is this is the problem with individualism because we need to have our personal car to get to where we want to go. When in reality, do we all need to have a personal car every single time to get someplace? It says the Congo is home to more than 90 times the amount of cobalt reserves found in the United States where Native American tribes have been exploited for the resource. Over two-thirds of Americans' cobalt is on Native American land. It is one of the several movements around the clean energy transition where workers and activists are highlighting how the greening of the world is coming at the expense of Black and Native lives. Recently, the push for mining in the Congo has reached new heights because of the rift in China-U.S. relations regarding EV production. Earlier this month, the Biden administration issued a 100% tariff on Chinese-produced EVs to deter their purchase in the United States. Currently, China owns about 80% of the legal mines in the Congo, but tens of thousands of Congolese work in the artisanal mines outside of these facilities where there are no rules or regulations and where the U.S. gets much of its cobalt imports. Meaning, China may be doing it a little bit more above board than the United States. When it comes to getting the cobalt, the United States just says, well, hey, go for what you know. Cobalt mining is slave farm perfected. That is from Sith Carr. Uh, wrote in the book, Cobalt Red, How the Blood of the Congo Powers Our Lives. It is a system of absolute exploitation for absolute profit. So let's go, uh, uh, this this part really needs to hit home. It says, while it's the world's richest country in terms of wealth from its natural resources, Congo is among the poorest in terms of life outcomes. Of the 201 countries recognized by the World Bank Group, it has the 191st lowest life expectancy. Remember what Michael Parenzi said? There's no poor country. These countries are rich. It's just they're overly exploited. And that's what we see happening in places like DRC. DRC is literally one of the richest countries in the world. 
if not the richest country in the world. But because of exploitation, the people are poor. So it says the exploitation of black workers in the Congo has contributed to some black transit activists in the US not fully supporting the transition to electric vehicles despite the pollution and health benefits for some black communities at home. The American Lung Association says 110,000 lives will be saved and 2.7 million childhood asthma attacks avoided by 2050 if Biden's goals are reached and transportation pollution is lowered. But today, although electric vehicles do not direct emit fossil, directly emit fossil fuels, the energy generated to charge an electric vehicle mainly comes from polluting fossil fuel power plants, which are disproportionately found in black communities. So even when we still, even when we still try to transition away from fossil fuels, we at the black communities are still harmed because the power plants still use fossil fuels, which power the electric vehicles that are being bought in mass. So we're still getting shafted here in the United States. This is why I say it's all connected. Does the activists say that moving towards mass transit options will create a actual societal benefits? So here's the thing. The best way to curb what's going on is yes, we have to change the system from the ground up. There are ways to go about it though some of the ways to curb so that we can fight climate change, but also fight exploitation is to go by mass transit instead of this mass producing electric vehicles. You see, the issue is you're making these big batteries for these vehicles for individual people which means you're going to need a lot more versus are we still going to be needing these batteries? Yes, but I'd rather have electric batteries made for buses rather them or trains or what have you than for independent vehicles. Let's take a look at this. because I think this is, let's put things into perspective. This is from uh, ModShip. Let me increase this size so that everybody can see. Okay. It says personal vehicles among the, are among the largest contributors of carbon dioxide, CO2 emissions, in the typical American household, it is estimated that the average household with two cars consists of three main areas of CO2 emissions, electricity, natural gas, and private vehicles. Electricity accounts for around 25% of total emissions, natural gas for about 20, and the remaining 55% is all contributed by cars. Public transportation is part of the solution to mitigating the effects of climate change, improving the quality of air in cities, and reducing the CO2 emission levels generated by the sector. Vehicles in public transit are better than for the environment and are more effective in reducing fuel usage as well as the number of emissions per passenger. An avid, average transit bus can fit up to 42 people, meaning that a bus, full bus can reduce the need for 42 single passenger cars from the road during a single commute. 
A group of full buses running every 15 minutes along one route can take up to 168 cars off the road each hour. It's estimated that one person can cut their carbon dioxide emissions by 48,000 pounds per year if they switch from their car to using public transit. So you got to think about it. If you're on a bus, right, 42 people in that one bus versus 42 cars. 42 cars makes up takes up a lot more room, and it's a lot more batteries because you have 42 people being moved by 42 batteries versus one large battery instead. That means there's not as many people mining that cobalt as well. So we're saving money, we're saving the planet, and we reduce the exploitation. And so that's the point, is to reduce the exploitation till we reach zero. Because we cannot keep happy, having this in this world. This, this is horrible. I encourage you guys to follow friendsofthecongo.org. This is a website that is raising consciousness about the challenges of the Congo. So if you guys would like to, you guys can go to this site. Uh, I follow them also on Twitter. So I will share their website here and I will also share their Twitter. So there you go. But there are solutions. So if we can start using public transportation more, that will also curb it, right? Um, we need more electric buses. If we can start doing that more to curb climate change, uh, encouraging uh, more public transportation. Also, if you know we can start, you know, pushing towards. If we can start pushing towards ballot initiatives that push for more mass transit, electric mass transit, so we can curb this, so we can get more ridership, then this would also help assist the people in Congo. This also helps assist our people here because it's all connected. Because then if we're not exploiting them, that means we're also not exploiting people here, especially those of us who are American descendants of slaves, because we're constantly being exploited. We're all connected. Let me share their also their uh, their page. So here is the page for Friends of the Congo. If you guys have not, you guys can also give them a follow on Twitter if you're on Twitter. Uh, the handle is Congo Friends. So you guys can go there and uh, follow Friends of the Congo. They also put up updates about what's going on there as well. So I'll put that in the chat. But yes, this is something I think that is absolutely important that we need to talk about when it comes to this type of issue. Um, also, if you guys would like to, there's also reports on Black Agenda Report that talk about what's going on in Africa, especially in places like Congo and Sudan. I think that's important to follow websites like that as well, because Black Agenda Report does really great reporting in these areas. You have Ann Garrison, you have Margaret Kimberly that write for these publications as well. Ultimately, what needs to happen is that we need to stop fooling ourselves. Is that we need to 
push for a better world that is more sustainable environmentally among all of us, but we have to do it outside the use of exploitation. This means that we can't do it through capitalism because that means somebody's going to get shafted. That means somebody's going to get exploited. That means somebody's going to get used in a nefarious way. And we cannot allow that system to continue. Are we curbing climate change? Yes, but at the expense of people in Congo. And if it's not people in Congo that are going to suffer, it's going to be other people that suffer. Look, we have Congo, uh, we have Congo, I'm sorry, we have cobalt mines here in the United States, but it's on native land. So are we going to do it at the expense of our indigenous brothers, sisters, and siblings too? No, we can't. So we have to do it differently. This also means that we have to change the system so that we have more fair trade with these countries. This means that we also have to stop these regime change wars and coups that our country does just for the benefit of these multinational corporations. Why do you think we don't have Patrice Lumumba in Congo anymore? Because these multinationals wanted it that way. They didn't want Patrice Lumumba to, to be around so that they can keep doing things like this. If Patrice Lumumba or anybody else like him were still alive and still had an administration in Congo, would Congo be going through this right now? No, absolutely not. But the West, particularly countries like the United States, want to keep this in place. This is why it's up to us to change things here as well as influence what is done abroad. It's up to us. We've got to change the empire from the inside so that we can help the world on the outside. Thank you so very much for watching my channel and I deeply appreciate it from the top and bottom of my heart. If you wish to support the channel further so I can keep bringing you content that is educational and informative, you can become a patron on patreon.com forward slash jbfon. You can find that link in the pinned comment or in the description below. No matter what you give, you'll be supporting independent media and education that helps make the world better. Thank you so much. And you can watch more of my content here. Mwah. Forehead kisses and have a beautiful day.